Today is March 2nd, 2019, and we are The Fallen Fruit, and this is our third episode. Today we were talking about ancestry, heritage, and lineage. There has been a lot of talk in the collective on the ancestral wound. We are definitely going to connect with that, but we also want to discuss connecting with the ancestral mythos and the story. So we got a lot of things to unpack and a lot of things to talk about. And thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to pass the mic over to Lynette. So just in the spirit of talking about our ancestors and the dark goddess, I just want to just take a moment to kind of connect our energy, invite our ancestors, invite the dark goddess, because In this process, we're learning and we want to pass on the information that we come across. So uh, just setting the intention that we can share the appropriate message and that we can just um, be a good example and be kind of a voice for our ancestors and the dark goddess. So um, if you're joining live or if you're joining later, just take a moment to close your eyes and just come to your breath. just just take a moment here and I just want to express my gratitude in advance for uh, the energies that are joining with us today and are in support of unconditional love and the work that we're doing here and so it is Okay, so um, we are the Fallen Fruit. Uh, Let's introduce ourselves again. Uh, I am Stephanie Genese. Lynette Ramos. And Catherine Urban. And so, yeah, let's get into it. Let's get it. (laughs) (laughs) So, Catherine, did you want to start us off with the astrology? Do you want to, because what we're talking about is how the astrology kind of ties into our topic yeah so a big reason why this is becoming a big subject in the collective is because we have the north node swinging through cancer and the north node we all have one in our birth chart it's a point uh that we're working with to develop and experience it's a little bit out of our comfort zone and the nodes have a 19 year cycle the lunar nodes also bring about eclipses. So when we have a new or full moon around the nodes, we get eclipses. And eclipses, as we know, are kind of stressful. They bring an element of fadedness. They put things in our path. They take things away. They help us to see things in a new way. So these points are also very potent when you know even if we're not having a new or full moon and so as i said we all have one in our natal chart we have a north and south node and but we also have them in the collective transit so wherever the north node is is where we are collectively working to develop Mm -hmm. and connect with and we see big themes but they only get really big around the times of the eclipses otherwise they're kind of like running in the background a little bit and they get activated by other transits as well um and then we have the south node and the south node has a lot to do it's a very spiritual point and it has a lot to do with our karma like what we need to clean out some people describe the south node as a cosmic flush valve so wherever the south (laughs) node is is like we're flushing it out it's like it's in capricorn right now Mm -hmm. and marie kondo is a capricorn and she's like get rid of your shit so (laughs) uh so that's what's going on but then in the collective sphere you know that's 
the south node is doing a lot in the realm of capricorn which in the collective it represents like big business you know we're looking at big corporations and how much power is too much power um you know that kind of thing so we're looking at that but not to veer off topic too much i just wanted to kind of describe where i'm getting this information but the north node is in the sign of cancer mm. and cancer it's asking us to learn to nurture ourselves a lot more so that's really the big message of the north node in cancer is we're learning to take better care of ourselves the sign cancer is ruled by the moon the moon deals with our subconscious our instincts our reactions the impulses inside of us that are geared towards survival and are very reactive the moon um it also describes like nurturing mm -hmm. so the moon is often associated with the care that you were given when you were an infant when you were just like really instinctual you didn't have a language so it's often associated with the mother but really it's all kinds of care or what kind of care you weren't were or weren't given as a child so it deals a lot with like our primal mm -hmm. nurturing mm -hmm. and everything but what kind of ties into that is the ancestry mm -hmm. so in your natal chart ancestry is largely found in the fourth house of your natal chart so that's going to get really personal but in the collective sphere we are working with this and this is why you are seeing this come up all over. Everyone wants to talk about the ancestral wound, you know, the the ghosts from our lineages and the spirits that we can connect with. This is a really big topic that people are interested in right now. And I'm seeing it all over my social media feeds. And I know mm -hmm. that we've even discussed it on the mm -hmm. previous two episodes. So here we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that comes up a lot, I think, for people, um, you know, even in my sessions, it's like we notice that there are certain patterns that we start to pick up on. And a lot of the people that I talk to, it's they feel like they have the responsibility of clearing it. And it's like they don't know how they ended up with that responsibility, but they mm -hmm. feel this pull to kind of whatever patterns that didn't serve them or their family, they want to kind of help to resolve it wow that's like pretty advanced spiritually of people coming to you and saying hey i don't want to just work on myself i want to work mm -hmm. on my ancestors mm -hmm. i want to help them a lot of people are saying it and even me even before i knew a lot about like how our ancestors like what the patterns you know how they affected us i would think about my own pain or grief and at one point I just realized this can't just be all mine. Mm -hmm. no. It was so deep and so primal and so painful. And I just knew that there was something else going on. And even in terms of mental health, I could see certain patterns with my grandmother, with myself, with cousins, with aunts. And it was mostly the women in our family. So it was like, okay, there's something else here that needs to be addressed. So yeah. 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 I mean, as far as like for myself, I know it's been coming up a lot. Um, I went to a family reunion this year and like learned a lot about my lineage and uh, my family from my grandfather's side um, and all the things that it's like, oh, we all have this in common. Um, even like as far as like my poetry, my great grandmother on that side was a poet herself. And really, yeah, they That's actually awesome. have like recordings of her reciting her poetry. Um, and they put them on Facebook and I'm like, oh, yes, this is dope. Like I can watch her recite her words. And anytime I post stuff about my poetry, that side of the family is always like, oh, your great grandmother's looking <laughs> down. She's so proud. Wow. Um, so that's re that's made me want to like connect and like, OK, how far back does this go? Yeah. Um, which we may not have all those answers. But, you know, you can do like even those past life things and mm -hmm. um as well as our gifts, but also like, like you said, like, what is this pain I'm carrying? What is this even like a medical um, problem or some type of mental health issue or something like that, mm -hmm. that, yeah, those things are hereditary and we see the science within that. But sometimes it's like, is it just hereditary mm -hmm. or is this like 
the wound manifesting generation after generation? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Yeah. And Lynette, you touched on that too of saying, you know, I started to pick up on things that maybe weren't all mine, maybe weren't all my own. And I think that that's an interesting thing to bring up as well because, you know, we might have those sorts of memories or why why is this happening like why do I feel this fear Mm -hmm. and maybe it is something in our ancestral lineage but it could also be our spiritual lineage too Mm -hmm. and I know we talked about that before but so it's kind of a journey to figure out where is this coming from is this part of the family karma or is this like something separate that is like from a past life Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, I think there's so many different factors. I remember doing some work with someone and she was trying to help me resolve um, maybe some of my money challenges that it was ancestral. So she had me do this meditation. And when I connected with the energy, the ancestors were like, you view money differently than we do. We, we don't have the same relationship with money. So sometimes it's these new behaviors that we have to adopt, that we have to think differently about and learn about. And sometimes we can blame kind of our family patterns. And that's a factor. But the point is, is that there's a lot of things that we're dealing with now that are kind of unnatural to us. Mm-hmm. And we're still trying to figure out how does this work? How can we be authentic and still live in this world and make money and do these things so it's like we have a lot to learn from our ancestors and then obviously there's this point where it's like we are the answer we are the ones that are learning and we are the ones that are going to be teaching so it's like we're kind of going back and forth between learning and then changing things too yeah yeah and i feel like you with like the quantum hypnosis healing that you do that that could also try to help kind of figure out where is this coming from Mm -hmm. and gain more awareness like you said oh this is a family pattern yeah people definitely uncover things or you know beyond just past lives where okay I understand where these where certain behaviors I have come from but it is definitely some of the um, challenges that we had before And uh, sometimes our ancestors even come into the session and connect with us. So um, the the main message is, is that we have to adopt what has worked well. And in many times when people view past lives, they were really happy and things were harmonious. And sometimes we have this idea that it was barbaric and Mm -hmm. just struggle. And I don't get that a lot. I mean, obviously that happens, but in many cases, people talk about how beautiful things were and you know, how communal things were and that they kind of miss that. So I feel like a lot of the the messages that are coming through is our ancestors want us to continue certain traditions um, and also adopt some of the new technology. So it's not that we're bringing everything forward, it's we're picking and choosing and using our discernment. Mm -hmm. What needs to come forward and what, what do we need to change? And that's part of doing the work. Yeah, true. <clears throat> like when you talk about um, people saying like things were happy back then and communal and they want to go back to that. It makes me think that a lot of the pain and struggle and difficulties that we have, like adjusting into society as it's built now, because it's so against our nature. We come from like a lot of times a communal people when we think back to Um, wherever our ancestors came from you know it was that village that um, communal mentality everybody helped out there was the um, the midwife in the town and the healers and the medicine people and you know and that's in like every culture every country had that Um, and so I think a lot of the times what we struggle with is that we're going against nature because we're not doing that anymore and it feels very isolating and we don't know how to cope Like you said, like, this is all new. So hard. Yeah, like technology and capitalism and things like that. It's like, this is so against our nature. So we're just like, we are, we have to figure out the tools to then teach our great, 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 great grandchildren. Like, we had to be like the frontier on this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, life is not a punch card. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And actually, that really ties into the astrological symbolism. 
I recently wrote an article for NCGR's journal on this nodal transit. And, you know, there's a lot of planets, difficult planets in Capricorn right now with the south node. There's Pluto and Saturn. It's dredging up a lot of karma and exposing the wound of capitalism, basically. Mm -hmm. And the idea, because what Capricorn represents, and I'm not talking individuals, I'm talking, well, kind of, I'm talking about just in general, Capricorn really represents like ambition and the hustle. Like I'm going to make it whatever I put in is the, is the, what I'm going to get out. And with that idea, but you can't be hustling all the time. Yeah. Really, the sprint only works when you're near the finish line, but it's not sustainable long term. So what's happening is, is that people are getting burnt out. Yes. So by the end of this 18 month transit, hopefully we'll all be a little bit better at saying, you know what, I'm going to take a break before I burn out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do something that nurtures my spirit. I'm going to listen to my body. I'm going to listen to my mood i'm gonna listen to what i need before i totally crash yeah Mm -hmm. so i feel like people are waking up too to like that self-care i mean you see it everywhere on social media it is like (laughs) little lists of like self-care you know did you do this today um and i think it's dope that like people are putting out these little messages like to remind you even to drink water yeah Um, it's like let's all take care of each other because we understand the hard work ahead um for those people who are connected and are aligned not everybody obviously understands that and that's where we have this like burnout culture and this productivity guilt that if you take a day to like chill you know lay in bed watch netflix do whatever you do um it's just like oh but then there's this guilt like I, i didn't get all this stuff done today um I think, yeah, but people are becoming more aware of that and realizing like, yo, I have to take care of myself. Totally. That's it. Like, I'm not gonna be able to do anything. Right. (laughs) Yeah. And we are like the, um, I feel like this generation specifically is like the generation of the hustle. Like we all want, you know, to not be stuck in this job for like, you know, 60 years and in a cubicle or in an office space or doing the same thing you know we like to change careers we like to have multiple you know gardens we're putting our hands in Mm -hmm. yeah 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 um another thing that and this ties into the self-care and to the ancestral thing is that we're invited to kind of play more dance sing you know, just be a part of a community. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, like you said, and like you said, it's like, you know, a lot of us are working so hard, you know, the time that we do have off, we're exhausted, you know, or, you know, we're drinking heavily. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) You know, so, you know, all of that is great, right? Like in, in moderation, whatever that means to you, like that's all good. But sometimes I feel like we're drowning in some of those things because we don't have what really makes us happy and what is really Mm -hmm. kind of lights our soul up. So yeah, this time is like a really good time to take like a staycation, Mm. just like in the next year, year and a half, Take some staycations, even if it's just a day, just block off your schedule and just say, today is mine. I don't have to write anybody back. Mm -hmm. I don't have to squeeze anybody in. Like, this is my day. Yeah. It's really helpful. Do something fun. Yeah. Yeah. Or nothing. Just like lay, literally lay there. Yeah. Like whatever you feel. (laughs) Go on a drive. Right. All of it. See what kind of trouble you get into. (laughs) All of it. (laughs) everything in moderation so are the ancestors speaking to us right now is that do you think that that's part of this transit i feel that they are yeah i think that uh, they've reminded me that we've disconnected from our earth Mm -hmm. and we've disconnected from what our natural cycles are and that's why we see so much chaos and destruction and um it's not balanced. Mm -mm. And so, you know, again, I know everyone can't, like, I personally wish I can go like to Central South America and just completely disconnect (laughs) and just, you know, be with nature, so to speak, but that's not, I can't do that. You know, I want to do that to a certain degree. So I think we all have to find what that means to us. Like, even if it's just taking a walk outside, 
um, or whatever it is. But yeah, I just think that we're being called to just come back to what we know works. And um, that's going to be different for everyone. Um, but I think a lot of us, we don't know a lot about our history or what our ancestors did. And we had a conversation before and we talked about what about the people that really don't know or they don't have access to learning about their family histories. And many of us are connected to certain ways of being or certain cultures or certain traditions that may not be organic to us. And we talked about how we can do that in a way that is appropriate. So we all have to use our discernment and integrity and be responsible with what we identify with and what practices we have. Mm -hmm. But I think we all need to find what that means for us. So how do the two of you connect with your lineage? Um, I definitely connect with it through writing. Um, that's the big thing. And then through like ritual and, um, yeah, just like my spiritual practice, you know, lighting the candles, having, um, pieces of my ancestors, you know, uh, my grandparents and things like that around like an altar, um, pictures, photos, just things from that place. Like I have a little jar of, um, red clay from El Junque, the rainforest in Puerto Rico. I asked if I could take a little bit before I took any. So Side not just, note. That's I awesome. did. Yeah. I was I was not <laughs> like, oh my note. God, red clay. Maybe I'll make a face mask. No, <laughs> I, I was like, I just want to take a piece of me. I left or I left a little piece of me. I took a little piece just as like, a, we'll come back to each other. And my hope is to like bring that dirt maybe. Um, back or something like that like it's like I have to come back like a horcrux <laughs> um. and what is your lineage Stephanie so my lineage is I'm half Puerto Rican on my mom's side Wepa. 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 <laughs> <laughs> she uh came here when she was like eight um she was actually born in the states and last like Puerto Rico's technically part of the United States but not really um that's a whole nother topic. Yes. <laughs> um, but um, so she was born here. Then my grandparents went back till she was about eight. And then they came back here. Um, and then my dad is from Italy, like straight off the airplane. He <laughs> came here when he was in his 20s. Um, so the rest of his family is back in Italy. So we have like n absolutely no side of that family here in the States. Um so he goes back every year. He's very connected with that part of his family. I am not. I went there once when I was like 10 months old. They took me. Um, but I don't really know that side as close. Like I grew up with my Puerto Rican side. So I was just totally immersed in that culture where I grew up was lots of Puerto Rican families. Um, so it was just that all the time. So I feel definitely more connected to that side. But I also want to honor my Italian side. And um, my dad is not the best at telling family stories. Sometimes he tells tall tales. It's hard to separate <laughs> fact from embellishment. Um, but apparently one of my great grandfathers on his side was also a poet. Oh. So he says that we have the book. And like I have it, but our family name's not in it. So I'm like, and I also can't read or speak Italian. So, yeah. To be continued. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on that side, but what about you, Lynette? So my father was born in Puerto Rico. He came to the States. I'm not exactly sure. I want to say around eight-ish. He was young. My mom was born in the States. Her uh, parents were born in Puerto Rico, lived in Puerto Rico, and the way that I connect with them is through ritual and meditation and also dance. It's super mm -hmm. interesting. If I am at like a drum circle where there's like that, that very rhythmic African mm -hmm. beat vibe, I literally, when I'm dancing, I do things that I don't ever do. And it's, it just like flows through me. So I don't know if like, I'm just kind of like my body remembers or there's yeah. or do our ancestors kind of coming in. I don't know, but it's interesting. And then I kind of black out a little bit. It's like Ooh. I'm not even there and I'm just mm. like completely immersed into the to the music. Wow. So I love that. Yeah. And I, that's why, like, if there are any like bomba, like, you know, 
drummers out there, please hit me up because I want to do something in <laughs> yes. Cleveland so bad. Yeah. Please hit us something up. Lynette and I need this. Uh-oh. Uh, Let's see. Let me go check. Hold on. We're going to check on that. We were trying to go live. We're trying to be like tech savvy, <laughs> all of give you all the options. Yeah. So we're checking up on our live stream <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's okay, fine. Yeah. Or do you want to log in to actually i don't Are know you? my wi-fi password and <laughs> i probably shouldn't give it yeah you're like hey my wi-fi password is everyone's like oh yeah 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 uh we can always edit this part out too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if we don't oh well oh well y'all are with us on this journey so, so what about your lineage Catherine? so okay let's hear about the white guilt um <laughs> <laughs> so um interestingly growing up i was always so curious about my lineage it's something i've always been interested in learning more about luckily my grandma on my mom's side she studied genealogy way mm. before ancestry DNA tests were telling everyone what they wanted to know. So my grandma and grandpa, like every time I go over there to this day, I hear stories about the family, mm. who came from where, how many siblings they had, what they did for a living. So on one side of the family, I know a lot like mm -hmm. We're Gaelic, Celtic, Germanic, all those things. Um, my grandma has one lineage that she can trace back to the 1100s wow. in England. So I'm English, Welsh, like basically all European all that, mutt, yeah. all around European <laughs> mutt. And I was so disappointed. Like when I got the ancestry <laughs> test, I was hoping for like a nugget of something unique and nope, I'm like 75% British. So, oh, well, and I, and like no hate to England or anything like that, but like, I don't feel called there. <laughs> so that was like kind of interesting. Yeah. But then on my dad's side, my dad was adopted. So we didn't, we didn't know anything. Mm. And at this point, um, he's done some digging. We know a little bit about his birth mother, her side of the family. But we have no idea who my dad's dad is, his mm. biological dad. Mm. Um, we have found a clue because of ancestry tests. Yeah. Like we found a relative that might be able to fill us into that side of the story. Ooh. So I love hearing these stories. Mm -hmm. I love it. And But I still feel that even in situations where people have been adopted, like you do connect with that ancestral lineage on mm -hmm. a psychic level. It mm -hmm. just might not be totally in mm -hmm. your physical body. That said, you do pick up on, on those impressions of yeah. the parents you raised you and your early environment before you knew what words, you yeah. know, before you had that language. So it's interesting because you do pick up on both. And um, so... I've done a lot of studies through astrology. Um, you know, as I started getting into astrology, I started noticing, oh my God, there's so many Libras in my family or, and I started seeing that pattern with a lot of people. So I started really getting into that astrologically and finding that these patterns do run in families mm -hmm. oh. and even, even in cases of adoption. So it's, that brings up a whole other interesting topic yeah. of do we choose our charts? Do we choose our family? And my my deduction says yes, to some <laughs> degree, to some degree. I agree. Um, I don't know how much choice you have. Some of it might be karma, but, you know, somewhere yeah. in there. But, yeah, so that kind of brings us into another conversation that we were having about so for the people who didn't feel like they connected with a culture, because I really didn't. Mm -hmm. I did not connect with a culture per se. Mm -hmm. Like my family didn't have like unique and special customs. Like we just had capitalistic Christmas. Like yeah. that was our tradition. And I thought it was 
so empty and I felt that that was lacking. So, you know, when I moved to New York and I started connecting with people that celebrated a rich culture, I was like, let me come to your parties and let me hang out. (laughs) And it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But I do. I love like family gatherings, tradition, culture, things like that. Like not only my own, but like if I have the privilege um, to be invited to sit in on someone else's or observe, um, I don't take that lightly, even in places of worship. You know, we grew up Catholic, but my mom, I will say this, was really open to me going to where, you know, I went to a Baptist church, I went to Jehovah's Witness um, meetings, I went to non-denominational, just all over the spectrum. She was like, yeah, go try it out. You know, I have a young kid who wants to go check out churches, like (laughs) go for it. (laughs) Um, Because religion always interested me. Like why, how can it have this effect on people? It's like the spirit of faith and belief that, you know, challenges everything that you may have been taught or that science shows you or teaches you um that this like but faith above all and I was always like wow it's insane and it can drive people to do very like fanatical things um so yeah I thought it was dope that she would like let me check that out but I did always you know like being invited to those spaces because you're like how do you live Mm -hmm. yeah how are these traditions you know Mm -hmm. it's beautiful to see Mm -hmm. I agree yeah yeah. So I I know that, you know, Steph and I want to talk a little bit about Guabanse. And the reason that we want to talk about her is, and we'll talk about this more later, but we have a retreat coming up where we're working with the Dark Goddess. So whether you look at the Dark Goddess as um, an entity or spirit or being, or you look at it like an archetype, an energy, um, this is something that's really important I think right now because as women step more into their role and kind of um, allow the restrictions and the prejudices and all of that, as we're doing that, um, it's really a lot of it, a big part of it is really embracing all of ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, the part of ourselves that's um, appropriate for society when we're kind and nurturing and loving and then we're also integrating that other side of us that people don't like when we're angry mm-hmm. and yeah, I don't know, I don't know, short and just not ladylike, however you want to look at that. And so this retreat, we're going to be talking about that. How do we integrate these aspects of ourselves? How do we get to know more about these aspects of ourselves? And Steffi and I wanted to talk about Guabanse because she is a deity in the Taino tradition. Mm-hmm. And the Tainos were the native people that were in the Caribbean, you know, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Haiti, Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And so Guavance was known to be like the goddess of the wind or the weather. And she primarily worked with catastrophic weather. Mm -hmm. And she was kind of the dark side of Atabe, which is she was like the mother goddess. She was more of like the nurturing, Mm -hmm. um, the loving. So so Guavance was the, the darker side. And the reason I think it's interesting to bring up is because we all know that Puerto Rico was struck by this hurricane years ago. And it is said that Guabanse is angered when she is not recognized. Mm -hmm. You know, when she, when people stray from their tradition, when people um, don't acknowledge or honor the land or our heritage. And so it's interesting that I feel that Puerto Rico has been very Americanized. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of it is because we were dominated and some of it I think is because we submitted. Now that's another story, but the point is, is that I think Guaban said it's it's important to look at her energy that a lot of us feel like there's a lot of chaos. Mm-hmm. And one can say that this chaos and this destruction is to birth something new. So um, Guaban says, Steffi and I both yeah. kind of feel really connected with her. And so I don't know if you want to add. Yeah, um, I think, you know, her being this destructive force, but even... I think the Tainos revered her because it was like, yeah, without destruction, like we can't 
birth new things, you know, things need to be wiped away so something else can grow there. Um, and I think with Puerto Rico and the political climate, you know, we've had politicians who have essentially submitted when Puerto Rico was taken over by the U.S. At first, the governors were um, white colonels, generals from the U.S. Um, they weren't even Puerto Ricans. You know, it was seeming like recent that Puerto Ricans were put in charge of their own island. And then the ones they found, we can debate, are a little puppet-like when it comes to their dealings with the U.S. Um, I think there's just so much um, in this land and going there and realizing like this place is actually like it's a portal it is magic mm -hmm. like that land is so alive um the things i experienced there in nature i was like this yeah this is a whole nother level i have um, like goosebumps yeah as uh. we're talking but i th i so that's why to me it's become like this center for this crossroads of the world like every culture country has passed through there you know puerto rico means rich port um, everybody came through everybody it was like they were hooking up they were making babies there's you know that's why Puerto Ricans are so diverse in their looks um, skin color hair just all of it because they are essentially like a race a children of the world mm -hmm. um, and so this fight that seems to be happening there there's also I mean, if you believe in the Bermuda Triangle, but one of the points is on Puerto Rico. So mm, it is. I didn't, know that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like there's a tower. It's like the exact point. And when my when I went um, to Puerto Rico, my mom was like, don't go into this certain tower at Whoa. El Morro, <laughs> which is the fort um, that the Spanish built. And she's like, people get struck by lightning. Your cousin got struck by lightning. I was like, all right, mom. Wow. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, believed because it's just such uh, this triangle, this portal that's there. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of things that lead me to believe the land is very rich. There was gold when Christopher Columbus, that motherfucker, 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 uh, when he showed up, you know, our people were draped in the Tainos, you know, a little bit of my people like small percent but it's still there still your people <laughs> still um they were like draped in gold they were living they were very peaceful people they were not about war and destruction um even when they would like fight or have battles they use like these sticks and it was just like you know like if I hit you the most, then I win. It wasn't like a fight to the death. <laughs> it was like sparring. Yeah, they were like, oh, all right. Um so I think that's really interesting that yeah. they were such a peaceful people and that yeah, they still, you know, had this goddess. And to her, um, to them, she wasn't so much like a malevolent force as just like a reminder that like, oh, you know, maybe we're straying away from our traditions. And like you said, yeah. we have. Yeah, we um, have. We have. We have. And I told them this story a couple of times, but I want to tell everyone this story about uh, when the, cur the hurricane came through Puerto Rico. Um, my grandfather called my father around four in the morning. And just to give you some information about my grandfather, he's he was in the military. He's highly respected. He's intelligent. He's in his late 80s. He's like, he's amazing. And he's like the, if you think of someone who's strong and just has this wisdom and this presence, that's my grandfather. So anyway, he calls my father and lets them know that you know the hurricane is coming through and you can sense in his voice that he's really afraid and um, if he is afraid then everyone should be afraid because he would be one of the last people to be panicked mm -hmm. and he told my father that it sounded like a monstro uh, a monster and she seemed feminine and that she sounded like or the storm sounded like a woman screaming. Oh my God. And so, you know, they were afraid that even like the roofs were gonna be ripped off. Like they, you know, I can't even imagine the vulnerability, right. but it that just, chills. it makes me think about that. Cause like someone like me or you or you, we, we kind of are tapped into the unseen world and we understand that some things happen that are hard to explain logically, right? But when you, hear a story like that from someone who's very connected with this earthly realm and very logical and very strong 
for him to say it sounds like this woman is screaming it sounds like there's like these just screams coming through and so I just Mm. I feel like obviously like I would never say oh it's a good thing because we're waking up because we didn't even know if my grandparents were alive for weeks you know it was scary um I guess I'm just saying that I want us to wake up. I want us to come back. Let's take these things that are happening as a symbol. And again, everyone's going to be different on how we interpret that. But even in my travels through South America, I feel like some groups of people have stayed connected with their culture and with the land. And I I don't know how much we've done that in Puerto Rico. Um, I haven't traveled there a lot, so I don't want to make any generalizations. And I have a lot to work on with that as well. But in general, from what I've seen, I feel like we've adopted the American way too much. Mm -hmm. And I just think that we need to figure that out. I think there's been a pull to like come back. Um, You're seeing with like, you know, people in our generation, you know, coming out and having a bomba night. And like, that's the big night. When I went to Puerto Rico, I went the December before Maria hit. Okay. Um, And it was like, it, it's definitely Americanized and, but it still feels, it feels like a different country. Good. Like you feel like you're not in the United States. Um, But that's also because a lot of the, you know, capitalistic things that are happening, a lot of the abandonment of certain areas, um, things that aren't being upkept, but then even just like the natural wonders, you're like this, we ain't in Kansas anymore. (laughs) Um, But people are going back, you know, like I said, like that ancestral dance of the bomba, um, that's like a big night in Puerto Rico. Everybody comes out. It was pouring and we were out there. People were dancing, you know, they were not going to stop having a good time. (laughs) That is when, you know, Puerto Rican people... We party. I need Nothing more of that. Stop that. I need yeah. more of that for sure. <laughs> more of the um, bomba. Yeah, like that <laughs> celebration of life. You know, even you hear about the hurricane and like the days after where it was blackout. What were people doing? They were like getting together, making food together out in the street, getting flashlights and candles and playing music. Right. You know, that's what our people do in times. We are of, celebratory yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> even like you go to a Puerto Rican funeral and like you have never been more lit in your life no like damn. every puerto rican funeral i've gone to i'm that's when i've been like drunk and like having a great time like dancing and talking to people and you're like but aren't we we're supposed to be sad it um, was like that for my son's baptism yeah he was like six months and it was like Everybody a massive was, like, party lit, doing drinking shots. dancing yeah. that's just how we do um but I, I think it. people are getting back and they're yeah. getting back to those ancient, you know, brujeria. Everybody wants to reclaim that bruja identity, mm-hmm. um, which I think is great because it is connecting us back to our roots. Even if, you know, with brujeria, it does have a tie to Catholicism, which people can see as like, oh, that was the oppressor. That was the colonizer's yeah. religion. Um, but unfortunately, like it became a big part of our religion, the Virgin Mary, you know, that's what we saw growing up. Right. Um, So it does sort of bring fond memories to us, but people getting back in the Yoruban tradition, Santeria and Espiritismo. And uh, I think it's so dope that like the younger people are like, all right, we know we have a lot of work to do. Um, There's a lot of art coming out of Puerto Rico. There's a lot of music and Mm -hmm. things of that nature and the younger generation being like, yo, like getting back on that nationalist mindset. Like Mm -hmm. we need to free our island. We need to get it out from under the stronghold of the U.S. Right. Um, But we're battling our parents who feel like, no, the U.S., you know, then we could be like Hawaii. Uh, We'll still have, you know, like our tradition and our culture, but we'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And like economically we'll be okay. They see the separation as like economical disaster. And I'm not a finance strategist, so I can't tell you. Um, but I do, I, I'm here for the liberation. I'll say that. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. And I feel like what you were saying about a lot of people kind of reconnecting with their cultural roots, their ancestral roots. I've been seeing a lot of that, mm-hmm. especially in the last even like handful of years, a lot of people connecting in that way as like a radical act, but mm-hmm. also like I'm claiming myself and I'm claiming my lineage 
and we've had the talks about cultural appropriation Mm -hmm. you know um, a lot of people have been being called out for that and we're just having like a public discussion about it Mm -hmm. and it's important it's time yeah yeah Yeah, for sure it's like we have to reclaim like our cultures yeah, I think it's going in the right direction in the sense that we don't have to look at the chaos as a bad thing. I think, you know, a lot of us are looking at, okay, wow, things are restructuring. Um, and it's hard to look at it sometimes because we know real people are suffering in this reorganization yes. process. So we just have to do our best to like uplift each other, support each other, continue to educate ourselves because, you know, I, for one, I didn't even want to learn how to speak Spanish when I was young. And again, that, potentially could have been like that's the oppressor's language but it yeah. still ties me in closer to my ancestors than the american language or i don't even right. know what you call it you know but anyway the point yeah. is is that i rejected a lot of that and so i i guess part of what i'm doing is i'm trying to realign myself because i see where i strayed off mm-hmm. so much in my younger years i didn't want anything really to do with it like i love the parting and all of that but i didn't really want to go to puerto rico i didn't you know what i mean and it's like wow like yeah. that's just part of kind of the conditioning i sometimes that think assimilation that assimilation yeah, yeah. you hear that, that a lot yeah like people i'm hearing that a lot like people older than us saying like i wish i learned filipino or i mm-hmm. wish i learned japanese or yeah. mm-hmm. I wish i learned spanish yeah i really wish i learned that when i was little but right our parents said like no we're in america and yeah. we're gonna speak english yeah you hear that all the time yeah, yeah. i mean parents bless their hearts i think they wanted to make life easier for us um, because they may have faced some prejudices you know my mom said she was made fun of for her accent and that you know the way she spoke um the way she couldn't grasp certain things in the english language and then she was like well you were you know doing so well and you were reading at a really early age and i just you know they didn't want to confuse you. But then later it's like, oh, we were speaking Spanish around the house. You just didn't pick it up. And it's like, well, yeah. Where That's she was like, really your good... father can't speak Spanish. So we had to speak English. And I'm like, yeah. I get it. That's but... a really good point that you yeah. made about like the parents thinking that they were doing what was best mm-hmm. or like thinking that they would make you guys have an easier time or something. Yeah. 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 In yeah. school. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we just we wanted to do our part with bringing kind of our own experiences to you guys. We would love to hear, you know, your experiences, what your thoughts were, if maybe we prompted any sort of memory or thought, you know, what your opinions are. And just to, again, think about how you can personally reconnect. Uh, How can you honor your ancestors? How can you connect again with the land? Um, and how you can just live from a more fulfilled place. So I'm, I'm just, I love getting feedback. So um, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, let us yeah. know. And I think, you know, Lynette and I bringing, wanting to bring up Guamase is for this specific episode um, and just focusing on that one dark goddess too, um, was about because she is essentially from our culture, from our lineage, but also because of what she represents. She represents the knowledge of roots and being rooted um, and the chaos that can happen when you don't, you know, sort of have those roots or the knowledge of them or that grounding or something to go back to um, so that you feel connected to this earth. Because I think a lot of the violence and... um, chaos and destruction that is happening is because think about the people who are doing it do they feel connected to this earth do they respect their roots do they respect their lineage um do they even know about their roots and their lineage Mm -hmm. they definitely don't have a respect for it because they're destroying the earth right um they don't have a tie to this earth like indigenous peoples do you know we can't neglect the fact that they put their actually like bodies on the front line Mm -hmm. to save this planet and to do right by earth while you know the people who came here are like ah fuck it like tear up the earth destroy it put a new strip mall put an oil rig and yeah it's like could you imagine just people coming in right now and be like we live here and like tossing pots and pans and ripping up carpet pouring concrete yeah Mm -hmm. and you're just like that would be insane but that is what happened. Um, and so I think 
the earth is pissed. We've talked about the earth this. Is pissed. She's pissed. Like, yeah, Guabanse, all that dark goddess energy is bubbling up because they're like, yo, you forgot where you came from. You forgot who you were. You forgot that you are of this earth and you're not respecting the house. Yeah. I'm- so like everybody's in fucking trouble. You're all getting an ass whooping. And I don't want to equate, you know, natural disaster where people have lost their lives to something like, oh, mom's just mad and it's an ass whooping. But like, we got to really do some like deep work. It's a recalibration. Yeah. 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 I'm really hoping that Uranus in Taurus, uh, it's going to be entering back into Taurus um, this week, actually. And Uranus has a lot to do with like awakening and technology and innovation and moving into the very first sign, the very first earth sign of the Zodiac Taurus. Mm -hmm. It's Taurus really is a lot about beauty and harmony and the five senses. It's ruled by Venus and it, it wants, it wants to indulge a little bit. Like Taurus is a little bit indulgent, but it really is like earth mama energy And so with Uranus going into Taurus, I'm really hoping that in the next seven, eight years that it's in that sign, that we see more of our technological um, knowledge fusing with how can we live more harmoniously with the earth. Like I'm talking solar power, wind technology, you know, um, free energy, my God, you know, so stuff like that, I think would be powerful. Um, Also just like, you know, as human beings, we are very wasteful. What kinds of technologies can we do to maybe make our plastics more biodegradable? Like there mm-hmm. is, you can make plastic out of hemp. It's probably cheaper, you know, than petroleum. So people you are know, making stuff out of uh, avocado seeds now. Oh, I, that makes so much sense. So much sense because, like, we're consuming av- avocados at an outrageous rate. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Avocado toast, <laughs> right? <laughs> <sighs> Eleven dollar avocado toast. It's like, listen, you're trying to build a wall around the people who are giving you avocados. Yeah, stop yeah. this madness. The fuck? It's fucking madness. Um, but yeah, like all these different ways. You're right. Like, how can we fuse? Yeah. So I'm hoping that that is something that can develop in time to help us kind of take another step forward. Yeah. Um, to get a little bit deeper on this subject, let's get a little juicy. Have mm-hmm. you guys ever like explored the concept of epigenetics? No. Yeah. Oh, Tell okay. Me more. So epigenetics is basically like learned behaviors passed down through your genes. So, A really great example of this is like the life of a bee, which bees don't live for very long. Mm -hmm. And, you know, who knows what their language or their capacity to learn is. A lot of it's probably instinctual, right? So, but bees are wired to um, like protect themselves against faces. So like the human face and bears because of the honey, like they got to protect their supply, And so that's why bees will sting us because we have a face. So that's like wired into their DNA. So this Mm. premise of this knowledge is passed down through generations, this instinctual knowledge that plays into did something traumatic happen to our parent or grandparent Mm. or ancestor was one of our ancestors raped, abused, enslaved mistreated you know what kind of trauma passed on through that lineage Mm -hmm. so that's basically epigenetics yeah so and and actually that ties into like what we talked about initially is that things are passed on that we look at as negative but then there's things that are passed on that are beneficial to us that aid in our survival that um, enhance our lives, our gifts, our talents. So it's like we're sifting through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, what, again, what do we want to take with us? And it also, I feel like epigenetics for me also makes me think about like nature versus nurture. Oh. You know, and it's like, even if we have, let's say that gene, I don't even know how it works. I'm probably saying this wrong, but let's say cancer runs in our family. If we live in a different environment, if we eat differently, if we uh, are more emotionally healthy, if we make better choices in this life, can we avoid that cancer 
because we are making different choices in our environment. We're nurturing ourselves differently. So yeah. I think they're both relevant. They're both yeah. relevant. Yeah. yeah, I think in some cases that yeah. would be true. Right. I can, you know, work around that right. or take extra care to avoid that. But yeah. if it's something genetic, then there is that predisposition. Yeah. So, But they say yeah. that most are not something that's passed down through genes that are just only like... And I can't explain, let me see if I can explain this properly, but most diseases are affected by the way that we, the choices that we make. Yeah. There are actually less diseases that we have no control over. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, we're discovering that, you know, you can alter your DNA. Yeah. So just because you're born with it doesn't mean that you can't change it. Right. And then one of the big things that people are discussing in like the new age communities and the spiritual healing communities is that when you heal yourself you heal the generations before you Mm -hmm. because you're changing that code you're changing your dna you're changing that story right and i think that that's really powerful work Mm -hmm. that we can do yeah yeah we're doing it we are doing it we're trying um i know yeah when you just become aware of like those patterns or that certain trauma. Um, I know you talked about doing, or you had done in the past an event around womb healing and womb clearing. Um, And I talked about, I'm like, man, I need that. Mm -hmm. Like there is a lot of trauma in that area. Mm -hmm. I think some traumatic things have happened in the lineage. And then my grandmother, my great grandmother died of ovarian cancer then my grandmother had, you know, cysts and all she had to have a procedure. Um, my mom has some problems as well. She recently had um, a little surgery. She had cancerous uh, cells on her vulva that she mm. needed removed. And I had the same thing that my grandma had with cysts and like cancerous tissue on your cervix where we had to get a procedure. And I'm just like, you know. These things are different, and yes, maybe they're tied into each other, and you could say that's just hereditary, that's science, but I can't help but think there's some real trauma that's happened there. Mm-hmm. Um, We're going to have to get on a trade. Yeah. Yeah. Do some womb healing. You do some tarot. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's do this. <laughs> cool. I need it, because I can't pass this on. No. I mean, I have two sons, right. so like cool yeah. but like what if they have daughters or, yeah you know or right. their partner that yeah. they attract yeah. right and, like what yeah. it, could they possibly pass on um yeah. if i don't do the work to heal some things so it's really interesting and so yeah there's a lot of ways that we can work to gain clarity on what our family pattern be it a wound that we want to get clarity on or what about the family mythos mm-hmm. what about the family story and that could that could include just kind of asking your ancestors, asking around who was grandpa, you know, what were his values? What did he believe in? What was his story? And you could kind of go down the family line. You could do that, you know, through your own family. You could do some research at, you know, certain like historical records mm-hmm. and everything. Um But what was the family story? Mm -hmm. You know, I know in my family, on my dad's side, one of the stories is hard work. You got to work hard. And for present day, Catherine, I'm like, oh, this is like oppressive and Mm -hmm. stressful. Like my dad's side of the family, they just care about work. But then you go a few generations back and my dad's grandfather was an immigrant and he came here with nothing from Ireland and he built a fucking empire for himself and a legacy and he worked his ass off. So that's why our story is Mm -hmm. work hard. Mm -hmm. Now that also shows up in that side of the family's natal charts. Everyone has strong Virgo, strong Mars placements. Mm -hmm. So, and again, like I didn't realize that until I looked at the charts. So that is a service I offer if people want to gain clarity into their family yeah. story. Um, we can do that. But you can also do that on your own as well. Yeah. And, you know, the same with me, you know, in the quantum healing and in the past life work is to look at the origin of certain limitations, problems, addictions, challenges, and also 
in many of my sessions, I shouldn't say many, but in some of my sessions, people have connected with a life that they felt that they were um, wise and empowered and um, they actually can connect with that and bring some of that forward. So it's not just in the session kind of looking at the problems. It's where are my strengths and gifts? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how can I activate that? Because I, I may have done something like this before. So that's, you know, it, in these sessions, um, there's a very much a, an intuition. There's a higher guidance that shows us where we need to go. And so I invite people to reach out to me for that if they're interested. Yeah. Tarot readings, too. I mean, when I read the tarot, I do it where at an altar where I have, you know, little tokens or talismans of my ancestors or um, family or things like that. Um, So, you know, those essentially when the cards come out, I always say it's a message from your spirit council, Mm -hmm. your higher self, the ancestors, you know, they're kind of. They stop down and like, oh, that card. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, give you those messages. And sometimes, you know, people a lot of the time, though, it hits like when I pull a card, when I tell somebody like this is what it is, this is what it could be. Um, it's usually spot on. I maybe had one person who was like, can I have a repeat reading? Um, you know, I, that one didn't make sense. Um, And I did it for her. But a lot of the times when we're like, oh, that doesn't make sense. It's because it's something we've ignored and we want to put so far on the back burner that we're like, no, can't be true. That's not me. I don't feel Mm -hmm. that. Um, Or I don't know what that could be about. Mm -hmm. It's like we've buried it so far down and it's like think deeper or like, is this an ancestral thing? Is it something that like you may not seem fresh in your mind now that you're currently dealing with, but that doesn't mean it isn't something that's happened, like you said, in a past life or within your family lineage that you need to take care of now Mm -hmm. before like the tower pops up and it's game Mm -hmm. over. (laughs) Right. And actually that makes me think of um, when we talk about the dark goddess And when we talk about this destruction that's happening, we're talking about it collectively, but this shows up in our personal lives too. So I just want to like let people know that if you're going through something and you feel that you're kind of in this chaos, this uncertainty, uh, pain, grief, et cetera, you know, it's easy to say, hey, things are just kind of reorganizing and you'll come out on the other side. I know it's not that simple, but I just want to let you guys know that this is happening for a lot of people in different ways, money, relationships, career, home. So if it's happening collectively, it's obviously happening on the micro level. We're each dealing with this on some level and some people are dealing with it more intensely than others. But I just want you guys to know this is some of the work that you can do to make sense of what's happening. You're Mm -hmm. never going to always know every single thing because sometimes the uncertainty has a purpose, but this, this type of work can give you some guidelines, some next steps, some insight, some guidance Mm -hmm. on just how to navigate those feelings. Yeah. Um, I'm going through some shit right now and like, I feel very angry. Like I know my dark goddess is activated. (laughs) She's pissed. Um, but I'm also learning how to like, you know, I came in here even when I showed up today, like for us to get together in our tree house. Mm-hmm. Um, tree house. <laughs> and you know, I was telling you about it and saying like, I felt bad being angry. And then Catherine, you were like, don't feel bad being angry, you know? And Lynette was like, no, you need to, that's what you need to go through. This is the phase you're in. You're in the anger phase. The next phase will be the next emotion. Mm -hmm. Um, And it doesn't look the same for everybody. You know, some people show up with grief first or confusion first or anger first or sadness or you know you don't seem to mind it or it seems to not bother you and then later you hit your anger stage it's not a linear process no no no. spiral and circle and like the double helix and that's (laughs) why you know i think that the dark goddess really represents like the dark side of the moon the Mm -hmm. the side of the moon that doesn't get the light that isn't seen that isn't recognized or accepted you know Mm -hmm. we have like the pretty emotions or you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. the acceptable ways of being needy and -hmm. then the unacceptable ways of expressing emotion but 
that are very necessary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And doing this dark goddess work, connecting with the dark goddess, it it gives permission. Mm-hmm. It gives the allowing for space mm-hmm. for these emotions that are natural and instinctive and yeah potent. Yeah. It's like you gotta ha- you have to give yourself permission, and sometimes realizing like the power of the dark goddess or the different archetypes we have in our life or even thinking about the um journey of the tarot and like the major arcana cards you know where you go from like the fool where it's like i'm just diving in head first new beginnings this is great um through to you know the middle where you hit like the tower and the devil and those things have to happen for you to come out on the other side at the end where you hit the world and you've reached a sense of completion and like you finished this specific journey but life is made up of hundreds of these fool to the world and back again journeys Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is what we're going to be diving into in our retreat it's coming uh, march 23rd um we'll post a link uh, here in the comments or, or in the post. It's in my Instagram bio yeah. Yeah. as well. And Catherine's going to be um, leading us. We're going to start off the day with yoga. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to have a light breakfast. Uh, then we're going to start with our workshops. She's going to be leading us in the astrology of Lilith. Um, for each participant, you'll know where your Lilith placement is placement is and so we're going to be talking about things in general but also on an individual basis Mm -hmm. yeah 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 and then stephanie's going to be taking us on the journey um through the tarot and writing so that we can look at our lilith placement we can look at the dark goddess within us look at what our goals are what our challenges are so Mm -hmm. she's going to dive into that Uh, we're going to have an amazing dinner we're going to invite all participants to come dressed the way that they feel the most beautiful and sexy and magnetizing. Uh, We're going to have some activities planned for dinner. And then we're going to dive into a ceremony and ritual that I'll be leading that will put us in contact with the dark goddess and uh, the goddess within ourselves. So we have an amazing day planned. I'm so excited. Yeah, so excited. (laughs) excited. I I really, I invite people that feel resonant. um, If you are ready to be your whole and complete self, uh, if you have some things coming up where you're up leveling, um, this is this is the retreat for you. Yeah. Or if you feel or like incomplete. You, yeah. 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 If you Good feel point. you just need Good a point. Per- perspectives change or you just feel like I just want to spend a day like in company of dope people learning about myself, learning about others and community with like that feminine spirit and archetype. Yeah. I think many people who have experienced sharing space with women or femme centric circles Um, understand that this is where transformation takes place Mm -hmm. when women gather it's a revolutionary act and you know spending just a few hours with powerful women is altering like I know that all three of us arrive we're kind of like and then we're gonna walk away feeling like yeah we got this but imagine the power of spending a full day together diving deep and you know we have a lot of different techniques to peel the layers back yeah. and to connect. do the work yeah. and like a day where you're feeling good um people are taking care of you and we're taking care of like your spiritual needs your emotional needs whatever they may be um eating like good food there's not no mcdonald's no. this is not the white house <laughs> no we're doing it better <laughs> fresh food uh a lot of like plant-based yeah um cuisine and things of that nature to just honor your body you know maybe that's not even a part of your diet and you're like no i eat like meat every day i'm not into that plant-based shit yeah but like try it out see how you feel you're gonna be or you know working the body muscle the heart muscle the intuition muscle all of it all of it yeah so if you guys have any questions about that please Feel free to contact any one of us. Yeah. Yeah. Slide in the DM. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Whatever you need to do. And to kind of just like wrap up with the lineage. Yeah. Episode three. We invite you to create your story. What is the victory? What is the triumph of your family story? How can you honor your legacy? 
and become a good ancestor. Yes. What do you want people to remember about you? What do you want your children, your grandchildren to remember about you? Do you want them to remember you were a money hungry, shitty ass, racist, misogynistic, xenophobic businessman? <clears throat> <laughs> or do you want them to remember like you did the groundwork. You tried to help change the world. You know, you were active in your community. Um, you were a good person. You were, you know. You listen. Be a good you, ancestor. Let's try that out. You fed the birds. Yeah. Just try to lead into the rest of this week, whenever you listen to this, whenever. But try to be a good ancestor. Yeah, what's the legacy? And I think that our audience and the people that would want to listen to something like this I think that we are the ones that our ancestors have been waiting for. Mm -hmm. I think we are the change makers. I think yeah. we are the ones that are continuing the work and acknowledging the sacrifice and the things that came before us. So mm -hmm. a lot of people that's are you. saying, you know, a lot of this is a great time to be alive. And I know that sometimes it's hard to see that, but I really see so much transformation yeah. and change. So, so much. I think we're doing the work. Yeah, y'all got in this. It. We're in it like <laughs> in a big way. Yeah, but yeah, we got this. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna do the best we can. So, all right. Well, that concludes episode three of the Fallen Fruit. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a blessed day. Mm -hmm. We'll Peace. see you next time in the treehouse. <laughs> boop boop.